Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today it's time for another LARP story. If you've seen my previous one, then you would know how I began the wonderful world of live-action roleplay. But let's take this story a little bit further into the future to go into my character's first big moment in the light. Hopefully by listening to this video, you might be interested in giving LARPing a try yourself. I know that some people don't have the guts to put on later hosen and pantyhose and go out and hit people with foam swords, but for those of us who do, we can enjoy tight pants and body rolls all we want. So, without further ado, let me set the scene for the story of Nicholas. It was long ago, in the land of Ilvaresh, where Nicholas was just about ready to become a bard and train under the masterful elven bardic teacher. This elven bard had a reputation for being a traitor and a scoundrel, but Nicholas sought him out all the same. It was there within the town of Ilvaresh, in a small camp known as Mahalanar, where Nicholas sat with this elven bard and a trio of other wild elves of the forest. It was then that Nicholas was given an order by a shaman, the very same from the last story. Nicholas, she said, I require of you coffee. And so, getting these orders, Nicholas knew what he had to do. He stood up and proclaimed, Yes, I shall get you this coffee, and I shall get it post-haste. And as he turned to walk away, someone in the back yelled, Hey, can you also get some plates, please? And he said, Yeah, sure. And so, off he went. As he traveled to the nearby fortress of Bainamar in search of coffee and some eating plates, he met up with another man, a man we shall call... Sam. Sam, you see, was training how to properly use armor, and part of that training, you see, was to wear very, very heavy armor, and walk about for a very long period of time to get used to the clunkiness. He had at this point a weighed-down chain shirt, a heavy shield, and a bucket helmet. Sam and Nicholas traveled to the gate of Bainamar, where the guards were overlooking the wall. As Nicholas and Sam approached, the gates opened and they were allowed entry when the guards learned that their quest was right and just. However, after searching for a period of time, Nicholas came upon an unsettling realization. While the plates were nice and tidy in the cupboard and easily found, the coffee, to his horror, the coffee, had not yet been prepared. Nicholas knew that he had to act fast. He had to get these plates back to Mahalanar post-haste, but the coffee could not go ungrounded. So he asked of Sam, Sam, please get me the coffee and bring it to the shaman in Mahalanar. Sam responded by nodding his head and saying, Mm. A man of few words, Sam had said all he needed to. Nicholas returned to Mahalanar with the plates in hand and told of the shaman that the coffee would arrive. However, Fate is not always so kind, and it seemed that the coffee was not to be. As, an hour later, as Nicholas was resting after a hard-fought victory, the shaman approached him, coffee nowhere to be found. She inquired as to its absence, demanding to know how an order had gone unfulfilled. Nicholas, in dismay, coughed out, I, I, but I... Sam! He was to get the coffee! But the shaman would not have it. No coffee means an angry shaman, and Nicholas knew that that would mean certain death, so he sprung from his chair and ran back to the mighty keep of Bainamar, where Sam was still found. However, he had taken his armor off to rest. The coffee was on the table, untouched. Nicholas went to Sam and he said, Sam, how, how could this be? The coffee, it sits on the table, cold and undefended, and yet the shaman does not drink of it. Why does the shaman not drink of it, Sam? And Sam to this said, I didn't say I was going to get you coffee. Nicholas was set aback. Recalling his memory, he realized Sam did not indeed say he would get coffee. But, and Nicholas stated this to Sam, an mmm and a nod is a sign of understanding and agreement. An unspoken pact between two people that a bargain has been struck. However, Sam did not seem to agree. To him, an mmm meant simply that. Mm. Nicholas would not take this insult lying down. And as Sam rested within the keep of Bainamar, Nicholas snuck off to where the armor of Sam lay. And in the pile, Nicholas retrieved his severance pay, a bucket of Sam. Nicholas, with the bucket in his hand, fled from the keep and traveled a long journey to the neighboring town of Crossroads, wherein he sold this buckety helmet to a fence for profit, and then returned back to Ilvaresh, his vengeance having been completed. However, as he was returning through to the town, his teacher, the elven bard, approached him, saying, Come on, Nicholas, we need to go fight a tree. Nicholas did not know how to respond to this, so he only said, uh, yeah, um, A tree? Uh, uh, sure, I mean... Uh and like that, they were off. 
The elven bard had brought along many an ally, around a dozen or so abled-bodied warriors, as the party was approaching this tree, which upon inquiry Nicholas had learned was an ancient evil treant of great power and strength. The party arrived just before the tree as who would ride behind them, but Sam and a knight. It seems Sam had noticed the disappearance of his bucket and spoken with the local chivalry, who had followed Nicholas's tracks all the way to crossroads, slapped around the fence, and discovered the identity of the thief, who now they had reached. The knight approached and met with the elven bard to communicate this problem, and as the two talked, the elven bard was beside himself. What? Nicholas? His apprentice. Why, there was no way that his apprentice could be a thief. It was just unspeakable. How could Nicholas have even learned such ways of stealing? It was not as if he had a teacher who was well-versed in the ways of stealing. No, no, this could not be. But as the knight and the bard had their discussion over what could and couldn't be, a tree in the background stirred awake. This was the ancient treant, and as the knight moved to take the thief, vines erupted from the ground all around the party and began swinging, crashing into all of the heroes. They put up their shields, they chopped with their weapons, but the tree was too much. The vines surrounded all of the party members. Several went down, several fought for their very lives. One man had a vine wrapped around his torso, and he was ripped in twain, his two separate parts thrown into the air. In the chaos, Nicholas approached Sam, and he said, Sam, I truly do apologize for stealing your bucket helmet, but you must understand that an mmm is a sacred bond that cannot be broken. Sam, not really thinking that a helmet and some coffee was really the biggest worry right now, responded with mmm, which was either a note of agreement or a grunt of pain as a vine whipped against his shield. Nevertheless, Nicholas had taken this as a sign that all was well, and he handed Sam the gold to repay his lost helmet. As a great and powerful witch doctor created a mighty ball of fire and hurled it at the tree, burning it away and causing all of the vines to go slack and lifeless, Nicholas breathed a sigh of relief, as did the rest of the surviving heroes, who all returned to Ilveresh, having learned valuable lessons about the price of promises, revenge, and chivalry. That is where the story ends for today, but I hope this tale has done you well, my friends. If you would like to hear more tales, or learn more about the wonderful world of Lark, then leave a comment down below, or perhaps leave a like, a subscription to Davy Magazine, or perhaps you would see right to fill my purse with gold by pledging to my Patreon. But in any case, I wish you good tidings. But yeah, Davy out.